attorneys at The Advocates can't actually prevent you from being in a cycling accident. They will be by your side to support you following your accident. Our legal services won't cost you a dime out of pocket. So when you need an injury attorney, call us. We're The Advocates, your Utah personal injury attorneys. You didn't deserve to be in an accident, but you do deserve an advocate. This is The Monty Show, the truth in sports talk streaming. When you want unbiased opinions about your favorite team without the spin, all you have to do is find The Monty Show, streaming live and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube. And now, here's Monty. Hey, hey, The Monty Show. Happy Monday. Welcome to the month of April. Already, it is April. The first quarter's over. I can't believe it's April Fool's Day already. Stop with the April Fool's Day stuff, please. It's just not. I'm no fun on this show. I get it. The Advocates at theadvocates.com present the Monty Show. It is April, and that means another community service initiative from the Advocates. They are working with the Murray Children's Pantry. I tell you every single day that the Advocates work in the communities they serve. Um, And they are working to eliminate uh, child hunger. Um, There are so many kids in this country. And I know that we, you know, we have fun on this show, but I'm going to ask you to be serious for 60 seconds because I think this is a big deal. Uh, There are so many children in this country who do not know where their next meal is coming from. Um, And you, you don't hear about it, but there are children's pantries out there. And in our communities, the advocates are working to support those children's pantries. And we are asking you to donate to the advocates on uh, Venmo Advocates Donations. Advocates Donations on Venmo. Uh, Every dime of your donation goes to the uh, Murray Children's Pantry to to fight children's uh, hunger. And it is such a good cause because we take it for granted. Most of us, we we don't worry about where our next meal is coming from. Uh, our, our children are well-fed, our children are well, are happy, are healthy, but there's a lot of kids out there that are not happy. They're not healthy. They don't have school lunches. They don't know what they're going to have for dinner. So please, if you have a dollar, if you have a million dollars, consider donating to the advocates who are working, uh, the entire month of April to combat, uh, child's hunger in this country. And they have a great cause. Uh, the children's pantry, all of their collection, all of their food goes to combat um, the hunger issue for kids in our communities. So hook it up on on Venmo, Advocates Donations on Venmo, Advocates Donations on Venmo. Um, uh, very interesting, very interesting weekend. Are you excited about the Final Four, Jake? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, it was a, it was a great weekend in college basketball i think you know the 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 final four you know i think is 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 pretty straightforward i think we can all agree we want uconn and purdue right but the the fascinating thing is going to be this nc state purdue game coming up with Edie and and burns jr right that's what everyone wants to talk about that's what everyone's kind of gravitating to and my point over this weekend was i just thought we we were treated to some really high level college basketball that was was pretty enjoyable to watch i am not sure and and i'm i'm sure that it's possible but for me i'm not sure i could give less interest that i have any less interest Mm -hmm. that i could care less i don't believe it's possible Mm -hmm. that i could care less give fewer shits about this (laughs) this final four Uh i don't believe that it is possible i am not a fan I am not that interested. Uh, I am not excited about it. Um, for for all of the uh, ACC honks that were in the comments section this weekend, um, you know where where I mean I, I understand it that the ACC is the greatest conference anybody's ever seen ever in <laughs> basketball ever in the history of college basketball. The ACC is just amazing, right? And they're not. Where's North Carolina? What did I tell you on this show Thursday? North Carolina is not going to the Final Four. And they did not go. But Duke. I mean, Duke. 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 And, you know, Duke's not going to the Final Four. NC State. 
Oh, man. Boy, if I could. Wow. I mean, who doesn't live the NC but State money, dream? It's the Cinderella story. The, the, but the dude. NC State and, you know, their, you know, their player that doesn't run past the Fat. free throw line on his own end. Because he's, you know, cardio makes yeah. in a salad, bro. Yeah. Like, and this is, but, but in all seriousness, when I look at, when I look at this final four, I'm just not that excited about it. There is no question in anybody's mind. I don't believe that we're going to get Purdue and UConn. And if it goes the other way, that's super cool. I'll be watching baseball. <laughs> like that's neat and stuff in like mm -hmm. in the, the, all of Such that. Such as in like, yeah. But I'm not excited about this Final Four at all. I don't think it's good for college basketball if we're talking about brands. Uh, we talked about it in in the early stages of this tournament. And, I, and I'm not trying to push people's button because I know it pissed a bunch of people off when we said it. Well, actually, I said it because Jake disagreed with me, but I don't think the San Diego State Cinderella story and their pro rata they never earned. I don't believe that that's good for college basketball. Well, it goes both ways. It, I, I think that it's it, it, the NC States of the world keep people interested, and there's a there's like this romanticizing of teams like this. And then when you get to the national championship game of college basketball, you know you're 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 faced with NC State and you know, God forbid Alabama, you know, in basketball and people are like, Oh wow. Alabama and NC state, man, real barn burner there. So yeah, for college basketball in this final four, you've got a lot on the line. You need UConn and Purdue. You need that to happen. Well, Max Muncy shattering the dreams of young people across the country because the Dodgers continue to buy victories. That's far more <laughs> compelling to me. Uh, Shohei Otani being a degenerate gambler, in my opinion, hey, is far is more English? compelling did, to me. Did, did we ever get a, a, a clear answer from the masses on whether Otani actually speaks English or not? No, he has an interpreter, <laughs> so he must not speak fluent fucking English, which the he does. Mundo. He does, excuse my... I was told the other day I curse far too little on oh. the show, so I'm just trying to make up on the curve. Right. But uh, Shohei Otani speaks fluent English, which, again, is more compelling to me. <laughs> Than the NCAA <laughs> tournament. I, 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 it, it, How it, much golf did you watch this weekend? None. None. I, I binge watched a Steve Martin true crime podcast, um, docu um, scripted drama thing. Selena Gomez with an absolute unbelievable. She's, <laughs> <laughs> she put on a few pounds in season three, right. but she looks great in season one. Okay. And the girls are on full display. Like th th that was more compelling than NC state, you know, so. why, why does the DJ Burns thing bother you so much, dude? I mean, it is fun to watch the guy just, no, bully it's not. People. It's NC state. Nobody cares. It, it honest to God, like, now, I, and I have not hidden the fact I'm a massive North Carolina fan, both in physical size and spirit. Right. Um, I am a huge North Carolina fan, and I, I honestly, NC State's not even on my radar. Like, I mean, you might as well be SMU. Like, <laughs> I just don't pay attention. Right. I don't care. Right. And when you when you won't even, and the ED thing. It, uh, He's not good because he's tall. Like the the asshole narrative that oh well, Edie at Purdue and and you guys may have you guys may have seen this that um, Zach Edie over the weekend dominated and he put up forty more points and Purdue is in the Final Four because of Zach Edie. There's no there's no if ands or buts about it. And everybody was like, well, he's only good because he's tall. Well. If if everybody that were tall put up 33, 23, 27, and 40 in the NCAA tournament, they would be far more wealthy. Mm -hmm. And they're not because Zach Eadie's actually a quality, well-conditioned, has touch, basketball acumen type player. Right. And he's really, really good. The dude who won't won't run down the floor um for NC State, you're embarrassing. You're not in, you're not in shape. You're not. And listen, I will say his name because he's a nice young man. If if DJ Burns is 275 pounds, I'm a porn star and I have a six pack of abs. <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. Uh -huh. DJ Burns is not 275 pounds. He is not a well-conditioned athlete. He is not somebody where you're like, my God, Monty, 
Monty, did you see what he did? Ran the floor, Fact. finished on the out. No, he didn't. No, he did not run the floor. And did he have 29 points? He did. He did. Did he make his 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 explosion onto the national scene? He did. Right. Against Marchetti, he had four fucking points. Let's stop with the Zach Eady, the battle of the Titans. These are two big men. That, no, they're not. You have a quality big man that's skilled and ready to rock and roll, and then you have DJ Burns. There you go. Okay. There you go. This cat averages 13 points and four rebounds because he had more mac and cheese than you did. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Dude, he had a 29-piece nugget last night. Come on. I'm just telling you. Yeah, I mean, look, there's no question he's a better player. There's no question about it. More skilled, you know, more ready for 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 NBA action. Like, you can clearly see how his game translates to the next level and why he dominates at this level. It's it's not hard to understand. I, I, think, the, the, I think the thing that people get enamored with with Burns is that it is different. It is unconventional. And you're right. He did put up four points against Marquette. And then he put up 29. And then, so what's it going to be? The question will be, what does he do against Edie? Do, is that same bully mentality going to be employed against someone who is taller than you and more skilled than you? You'll have to let me know because I'm not going to watch. Well, I, that's probably not true. Yeah, but I, anyway, I, my point is. I do think it's one of the most compelling matchups just from a player standpoint. I don't think this really. Yeah, I don't think. Oh, I, I don't think this I tournament's totally disagree. been. I'd rather watch Burns and Eni than than you know, let's say, you know, Baycott and someone like you know what Baycott well, is. You know yeah, what he's nobody not. cares like, about. Our, <laughs> that's the problem for the for fucking North Carolina. He doesn't show up in big games, in my opinion. I'm a bitter North Carolina fan. Right. I'm not interested in Duke torching Illinois or uh, UConn torching Illinois. Like UConn, is there anybody who argues that UConn's the best team in this tournament? No, I don't think so. They're a double digit. Do you guys understand that that you have a situation where I believe UConn's a double digit favorite? I was looking at the line last 11 and a half point favorite over Alabama. Yeah. I said 11 and a half points in the final four. Yeah, I thought you said they're five possessions better. Purdue is nine and a half points favorite over NC State. Yeah. And uh, I listen, I think Alabama, I think Alabama's run, unfortunately, I think that Alabama was just, they wanted it more. They wanted it more than North Carolina. I don't give a piss about nothing but the time. Right? Like, they wanted it more than North Carolina. Watched pretty much every bounce of that game. And they they just and, – and we can sit here and we can spin it and we can try to – I would love to tell you that North Carolina gave it everything they had and shot making and it just was the bounce. It wasn't. North Carolina ran out of gas and didn't want it. And – you, you look at the numbers, you put four starters in double digits in your North Carolina, and all you got off your bench was 15 points. That nor the North Carolina, who's yeah. supposedly this deep team, 15 points. Did I mention that you lost and uh, Alabama had seven points off their bench? You didn't want it. You didn't want it. Now, does that take away from from what Nelson did for North Carolina or for Alabama, it certainly does not. Yeah. It certainly does not. I think Alabama is a quality team, a quality team. There's no question about it. I am not excited to watch them get torched by UConn. Yeah. And I, and I think that again, in the bigger picture, you know, I, I do think seriously, basketball, college basketball needs UConn and Purdue. I mean, it just has to happen. It has I mean, to you, happen. Dude, if you get NC state and Alabama somehow, or you get, you get a UConn blowout of NC State, let's say. Please. Uh, that's that's going to be terrible for basketball. The only way that I think NC State or Alabama can win this game, it's got to be a freak. They've got to hit like 800 threes in the first <laughs> five minutes of the – like literally 800. They have to have 2,400 points by the, by the time five minutes comes off the clock. I'm for real. They better hit every three they shoot. Yeah. And 
Billy Bob had better have an extra serving of chicken and biscuits. Better, dude. That that's the only way. NC I don't give State's. a piss about nothing but the tide, baby. And Alabama, bet, I, I, in all honesty, Alabama better not miss a three pointer, and they better not shoot a single two in that game. Right. No free throws. No two point shots. All three pointers. That's the only way you're beating UConn. Right. You're gonna have to have. You're gonna have to have freak factor. Yeah. I, I don't know how else. And and this is the issue when you look at. When you look at the the conversations we had last week about, you know, who's the best conference, and it's why I continue to tell you the NCAA tournament has no factor and no bearing on who the best conference in the country is. Because is there anybody who thinks that at the SEC, the Big East, the Big Ten, so now that Purdue's in the Final Four, the Big Ten is obviously the best conference in the country. Now that NC State representing the ACC is in the is in the final four. That's clearly that the oh wait we're getting the, somewhere. The Big East must be the yeah. best. The NCAA AA tournament has no bearing. Has no bearing on who the best conference in the country is. Yeah, none whatsoever. And then there is this Florida State story, which I wish I could tell you this was an April Fool's joke, <laughs> but you hyenas just go for all the fresh meat. You guys go for all, you drink all the blood in the water, don't you? You do. Because last week, the the absolute foolishness that was Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in, in the college football world where you actually have people putting out stories that Florida State is going to go independent for the upcoming football season and that it's going to happen, sources have told somebody none of us has ever heard of <laughs> that Florida state is going independent and it's a done deal. And so now I got to deal with, cause people have figured out that I don't really do much on Twitter. So now I got to deal with a bunch of DMS on my freaking TikTok. Don't DM me on TikTok. Ask, hey, Monty, hey, Monty, Monty. <laughs> Monty. Listen, I'm, I, I, hey, hey, Monty. <laughs> Don't, hey, Monty me, because I'm not playing the game. It, it, listen to the words that are coming out of their mouths. Florida State is not going independent this season. That's, it is an impossibility. And again, this is Monty's toolkit to less stupidity on the sports fandom, ask yourself this question. What would it take for Florida State to go independent in football this coming season? Well, considering today is is April 1st, May, June, July, August. We have four months. So in four months, they're going to go independent. When the Pac-12 couldn't get a suitable TV deal in two years, you're telling me that Florida State on their own is going to go independent. Who's going to televise their home games? Just I, And I'm asking for a friend, obviously. Um, Who's going to televise their home games? Here's the other, just out of curiosity. Who's going to play them? Because, and I know this is rocket science, and I got laughed at when I asked the question. Talking to a source that has been rock solid for us, asking Hey, is there any chance if Florida State goes independent this year? Got laughed at. And you know what this person said to me? Who in the ACC is going to agree to play them after Florida State would have to have left the conference and cost all of its partners an ESPN TV deal likely? Who is going to help Florida State go independent this year? Has anybody thought about that? Oh, and then there is the contractual obligation they have to play their games that are on the schedule, which is already made for this season. And they're going to earn an inordinate amount of revenue in that conference. And they're just going to walk away from 50 plus million dollars and a, a chance at the college football playoff and a chance at a, 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 a bowl games. And they're going to hurt themselves in recruiting and they're going to screw themselves out of multiple significant relationships on the TV and the broadcast front to make less money, have almost no access to the college football playoff. You, you're, you're bought, you, you believe this, you think this is true because some guy on a YouTube channel 
And, a, and apparently it started on a YouTube channel with 107 subscribers who's been around for two days. And everybody lost their mind over it. This is the stuff I don't understand. At least think through it before you hit me in the DMs on TikTok. Money. Money. On, on TikTok. That was the best part. On TikTok. Via social media. Hey, Monty. <laughs> Listen, after I was done watching Oak State James review the best corn dogs at college football across stadiums, um, stop. There is, there would be the there would be almost no scenario that would allow Florida State to go independent and be financially and competitively viable. And it just doesn't behoove them. That that's the thing that that was my biggest takeaway is like when you look at Florida State going independent, like there, yeah, sure. Did you accomplish getting out of the conference at that point? Well, yeah, of course, because at that point you'd be independent, but but what th there's nothing after that. It's like, oh, cool, yeah, we're gonna go and do this thing, but how does that help us five years from now? And and that's what I didn't understand about people jumping all over this. Like, there's no incentive. So you're not gonna get paid, you're not really gonna be on TV. You're not going to be competitive in the college football playoff landscape. So what really are you doing? That's the issue. And so I, I that's why I feel like you haven't really heard a ton out of Florida State's camp recently, you know, the last two weeks, let's say. Because there's not much to say. There's not much to do. You're sitting here basically on autopilot waiting for something to change in the situation. You're waiting for, you know, the UNCs of the world or – you know, hell, I guess NC State now to 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 decide whether they want to leave the conference or not. Like you need something else to happen to allow you to even have this conversation reasonably. And that's that's why, again, I say I, I just don't understand why everyone hops on this stuff right away. Like, yeah, sure. Does Florida State want to get out of the ACC? Yeah, I could have told you that it's a well-known fact. It's not a secret anymore. They've tried. They've failed. So what 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 are they left with? Yeah, well, I guess we'll play our schedule, make our make the money we're supposed to make, and move on with it. That's where things are at. So there's no way. Like I, I, I honestly feel like people think that you can just say, "All right, cool, let's just check this box, and now we're independent, and now we're out of the conference, and we just decided to do that." That's not how it works. It's so much deeper than that. And to your point, like I don't know why you guys would, you know, give credit to uh, a, a channel like that. I guess who's who's been around for two days. Like what was what was the point of that? I I I, just, I have no I, idea. I don't man. know why people are. I I guess I don't know why people are so hungry for something to happen with Florida State. What what is it that 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 we we as fans of football, <clears throat> college football, want to happen with the ACC? I mean, do we are, are are we saying we want the ACC to melt down? Because if the ACC melts down, I'm telling you, that's gonna have that's gonna have wide ranging impacts. Well, and I I just continue to tell you, Florida State. Clemson, North Carolina, none of them are capable of acting on their own. And it, it, it's it's crazy to me that that football fans and people that supposedly follow the sport on a daily basis don't understand that. Like you do not, you cannot unilaterally decide to go independent. There there is no way to to thrive doing that. It, it, there, it, like, what is the upside of that? What is the upside of that? Unless your name is Notre Dame and you've always been independent in football, unless you are Notre Dame, what is the upside of being an independent? It, 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 I think BYU is probably the best petri dish for this. We saw BYU for a decade struggle to find their seat at the table in a path to the college football playoff, the BCS, et cetera which is why they were so thirsty to get into the Big 12 because it was their only road forward. Thanks. You, It is just scheduling. Just scheduling is a, almost an impossibility in an era where you have all of these major conferences. Do you really think that the SEC is going to schedule Florida State? Why, if you're an SEC team and you're already playing – nine conference games, and there's a likelihood that's going to bump to 10 at some point. Let me ask you, why would you schedule Florida State? If you are a Big 12 football team, why would you schedule Florida State? It does not help you in this era. As 
Florida State so poignantly displayed, it does not help you. At the end of the day, in December, when the decisions are made about who's going to the college football playoff, losing to Florida State in October, in November, does not help you. Right. So why would you schedule them? Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. It makes it just makes no sense. I I am I am of the belief that you have to you really have to just wait this out. And you know, I've asked a lot of questions over the last few days. Um, where is Florida State versus the ACC? From what I'm told, they are just simply going through the court process now, and they have had substantial settlement talks, and they are further and further apart which is why Clemson filed their court action um, because I'm told that Florida State and the ACC, while they worked diligently to try and find a path forward, there is no path forward for those two parties. Florida State and the ACC were not able to find mutual separation. And I think it is just building momentum now. And I do think the next six to eight weeks is going to really determine the fate of the ACC. Because I think what you're going to see is North Carolina now is singularly focused on their path forward. And you look at Duke and you look at NC State's a great story. I mean, both men's and women's uh, basketball programs are in the Final Four. And I think you're just now on the clock waiting for this tournament to end. And I think there is significant movement behind the scenes. And I think that Bubba Cunningham is focused on doing what's best for North Carolina. I think Clemson, Florida State, I think they're all in that same boat. And I will go back to exactly what I've said for the last week, that Brett Yormark has aggressively worked behind the scenes to create lines of communication with significant targets. And again, I was told that Virginia is one of those targets, that Brett Yormark would would love to add Duke and Virginia from the, from the ACC. I don't believe that he has much interest in North Carolina State. I think he has significant interest in Louisville as well. And I think he'd like to pair them with Gonzaga. Yeah, and I, and I just think at what point do these ACC schools begin to accept the fact that that their efforts to get out of the conference might as well be waves crashing up against the rocks, right? I mean, you're not going to break this grant of rights. That's not the way out of the conference. And at some point, someone has to accept that. And And that's why I keep saying, you know, the ACC is not going to sit here and be like, yeah, sure, Florida State fam. You guys can just leave the conference and not pay us the exit fee or or pay a a smaller portion or you know whatever Florida State is now asking for in the day-to-day conversations. You know, and, and that's been my biggest thing with Florida State. Do you understand that Florida State's not just asking to leave the conference, right? They're no. not just trying to leave the conference. They're trying to leave the conference in a way that allows them to both retain their TV rights and not pay the exit fee, which to me is just is just is you know, it, you're overcomplicating the situation. It's very clear what you agreed to. So the idea that the yeah. ACC gets blamed for for like holding these schools back or like being a problem is crazy to me. These schools are the problem. The idea that Florida State and Clemson got together and said, "Yeah, the best way to do this is to sue the conference." It, you're out of your mind. Like uh, the best way to do it is to go to conference leadership and say, hey, this is our situation and, and what we would like to create. How can we do that through ESPN, let's say? Or how can we do it in a way where we don't have to have some huge public Yeah, corporate? and I think if you are... The right way to do this would be to get 10 teams in the conference together, put a, put a call together with ESPN, and find a way out of the conference. That's how you're going to get out of the ACC. Yeah. You're not going to do it as an individual actor. You're not going to do it by taking them to court and claiming how unfair things are because you signed the agreement. And really now you're you're waiting to see what ESPN does with its option. Uh, now you're waiting to see what the future may hold uh, for, for your, your university, but you're going to have to find nine other universities to go with you. I think that's the only way that this works. I think Notre Dame... Somebody's going to have to get to Notre Dame. And Jack Swarbrick, who retired now essentially as the athletic director, has been a very influential figure in the political ecosystem of the ACC. And I think that it's going to be very interesting to see what Notre Dame 
does with their philosophy and what they do going forward. And I don't believe, and again, I know a lot of people in that business, I don't believe that Notre Dame has any desire to join a conference. Right. I don't. I think that Notre Dame has no reason to, and I know I say this all the time, um, I point out that when I when I look at Notre Dame, as it is explained to me, the only reason that Notre Dame would join a conference for football, A, I am told it would only be the Big Ten. B, they would have to have a financial reason they do not. They are getting a, an incredible amount of money uh, from the college football playoff. If they are in the top 14 teams ranked at the end of the season, they're guaranteed a spot. So not only are they making money, not only are they guaranteed a seat at the table in the college football playoff if they're one of the 14 best teams in the country, according to the AP, the coaches poll, and then the college football playoff, Right. which why would you keep them out? You're going to work to get them in because what does Notre Dame also have? A massive TV audience and a really lucrative TV deal. So they have access they have significant revenue. They have everything that you need. They schedule really well. People want to play Notre Dame. USC worked vigorously to keep that, that series alive. Michigan and Notre Dame have talked about reviving their game. Like Notre Dame has no reason to join a conference. So they have no reason to create turbulence in the ACC. None. Because the other thing you got to remember is what else does, what else does Notre Dame want? a relationship with ESPN. Yes. They want a relationship with ESPN. They're going to continue to cultivate that, which is why they're in the ACC to begin with. A, B, they know that they have this scheduling alliance. And if you look at Notre Dame's schedule, look how deep it is in the ACC. And yet they still get their matchup with USC. They still get their, like, it It works very well. It works very well. I, I don't see any reason for... Notre Dame to be part of a group that is going to create turbulence in the ACC. I really don't. No, and and, and I think the only thing Notre Dame's got to avoid, it, it, you know, the only, or I guess the only way that they could mess up their situation is by becoming a villain with ESPN. I, yes. I mean, that's really the only way that Notre Dame could put themselves in a bad spot. So I agree. Why would Notre Dame get involved in any of this? Uh, and and you know, be the be a poster child for. For a conference meltdown, that, that's not what they're interested in. They're, they're interested in continuing to keep their situation because yeah. all their situation is doing is paying them and allowing them to be successful. I, and I just will continue to tell you, please stop with this. Please stop watching videos. Please stop, you know, perpetuating bullshit across the interweb. Right, just stop doing it. Stop doing it on X. That in. Again, every, a lot of people ask me, well, Monty, you never reply to me on Twitter. I don't reply to anybody on Twitter. No. Nah. Because Twitter is just, Twitter's good for one thing. Push it out, have people watch. But I am not getting into debates with people who think they know everything. I am not getting into debates with people who are only there to be trolls and stir the pot. Yet, here you are on, on X, buying into the trolls and stirring the pot. On a story that is essentially fabricated there's no path forward for florida state to go independent it would take the only way that i from what i gather that they could go independent in four months they would have to win a court case they would have to get a massive financial settlement and then they would have to buy games that's the only way i mean they're we're talking about, you think it's expensive to get out of the ACC. Do you know how expensive it would be for Florida State to build a schedule in the next four months where they could play a full schedule of games? Do you know how much money that would take? And the relationships you would burn through that process. My God, it is, it is, it is just wild. And if you start looking at, if you start looking at all of the other ramifications, recruiting alone, how much damage would that do to you as, as a football program to be independent out of nowhere? What are you going to say to all of the people who signed your letters of intent? Oh, yeah. Hey, fellas, enjoy the portal. Enjoy the portal. Because that's what's going to happen. And I think when you start looking at you start looking at Florida State, um, who's who was 13-1 and one last year, 
and you start understanding that it's Georgia Tech, Boston College, Memphis, Cal, SMU, Clemson, Duke, Miami, North Carolina, Notre Dame, Charleston, Southern, and Florida, they have a free pass to the college football playoff right now today. With that schedule, they're guaranteed that they are going to play unless they just have a meltdown. So again, I ask, why are you so hell-bent on doing this? Because I get it. You're not making as much money as the Big Ten. I get it. I understand it. The SEC is making more money than you. I get it. <clears throat> but it's not like you're indigent. It's not like you're you know, struggling to pay the bills, bro. You're The only bill you're struggling to pay on a continuing basis is your legal bill. Because you, you yeah. want to continue to fight and fight and fight instead of appreciate the position you're in. And I'm going to keep saying this. At some point, schools like Florida State will have this come back to them. At some point, they will pay a price for this type of behavior. And yep. and and I don't know when that's going to happen. It'll only happen when they when they need someone uh, for something. Like let's say they need the Big Ten to get you know access back into the college football playoff. Let's say or the SEC, whichever it winds up being. But my point is, is you can't continue to behave this way and think that people aren't going to take notice and people aren't going to you know, treat you a different way. You, you're you're trying to blow up a conference. 100%. That's a bad look, man. And before we get to your comments, make sure you hit the like button, please. Uh, if you have not yet, give us a thumbs up. The other thing that I would say here is when you look at what, and it, 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 and I hate to, what's the TV deal that still has not been announced for the Pac-12? Yeah, here we are Okay, again. so I ask, if, if you just look at what a possible TV deal could be, you're looking at like a Raycom deal. You're looking at like a, obviously the state, you're, you're going to need somebody that is a regional, like, do you understand how you're not getting a national deal? Yeah. You, you don't have time to do that. So you're going to walk away from a schedule that is as easy as pretty much easy gets you're guaranteed a spot in the college football playoff unless you're just terrible. It it, it, just, yeah. it makes no sense. It, it makes no sense to go from a national brand at Florida State, because whether you like Florida State or not, they are a national brand and national power, to a regional television deal, which would shrink your ability to make money, shrink your ability to recruit, and shrink your access to the college football playoff. Yeah. There you have it. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Everybody just tuning in. Don't forget we're presented by the advocates at theadvocates.com and the advocates are, uh, working with, uh, Murray children's pantry to provide, uh, meals for kids, uh, that are hungry. And again, every time we do something like school supplies, there is a belief that kids, you know, Hey, if you don't have a pen and, and paper, the school will give it to you. It's not the case. That is not the case. The only person at a, the school will give it to you is that classroom teacher. And that is in the lower levels. If you look at all of the kids in this country that are struggling to find their meals every day, they don't know where their next meal is coming from. They don't know if they're going to have dinner when they go home tonight. That is every day in every city and town and county and state in this country. There are kids who tonight do not know what or if they're going to have dinner. We can make a difference, and the advocates are trying to do that. Advocates donations on Venmo. They are working with the Murray Children's Pantry to provide meals and, and things like canned food, um, things like nutrition at a very basic level, a very basic level for kids who don't have food, who don't know what's for breakfast, lunch, and, and dinner. If you can give, please consider donating to the Advocates on Venmo. Advocates donations. Advocates donations uh, on Venmo. Uh, if you would like to donate to the show, we are happy to forward it on, but I would much rather have you really Venmo them and just put kids, you know, food for the kids. Monty, food for the kids. I would love it if you'd shout us out. Monty, food for the kids, great. But even if you don't, just put food for the kids and donate to Venmo because that money goes right back to the community to to feed kids who are are hungry. Make it happen advocates donations, advocates donations on Venmo. Hello Aaron Wilson. Wow. Tortilla Land is back. 
Tough, 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 tough. Yeah, NCAA tournament yeah. in Lubbock. Really, dis- you know, like if we get into, and I, I, I'm happy to open up all these conversations in the comments section. Again, I will tell you the NCAA tournament, it, it has little influence over who the best basketball conference in the country is. Yet I still get DMs over the weekend. Hey, hey, two holes, two holes. How is the Big 12 not the worst conference in the country now? How, how, how is it? How, how, how can you guys say they're the best basketball conference in the country? Well, I know because again, the tournament is a is a a one team special. The tournament is who's the best team in the country. And yes, you can look at numbers and you can say, hey, yeah, the Big Twelve, uh, you know, didn't have a great showing. And I don't even disagree with that. It wasn't a great year for the Big Twelve in the tournament. I I don't think anyone disputes that. But I also don't don't think that we can sit here and say that the Big Twelve is somehow uh, the worst conference in the country, or they they there's no way anyone could ever look at them as the best conference in the country uh, on the basketball court. Yeah. I, I I think that that the only reason anyone's saying that the SEC had a nice year is because Alabama's making uh, a run. Like, and you guys understand that they brought Nate Oates on I think three seasons ago now. And, and yeah, he's finding his way. His recruiting's working. So they're in a cycle there at Alabama. Guys in the draft. Yeah. Like, so you're in a, you're in a good cycle on the basketball court, uh, you know, in, in Tuscaloosa, but that doesn't mean that the SEC all of a sudden is, is the best conference what about in Kentucky? basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your blue blood is not a blue blood anymore and you can't afford to fire John Calipari. So anyway, all of this to say. The ACC is a great basketball conference. The Big 12 is a great basketball conference. And as I've said for weeks, there is very little discernible difference in the quality between those two. I happen to shade that the Big 12 is a little better. Big 12 is a little deeper. What happened in the NCAA tournament does not change my mind on that at all. If UConn wins the NCAA tournament, and they're going to, are you telling me that the Big East is the best basketball conference in the country? It's not. They're not even in the conversation. Friends. The NCAA tournament does not determine yeah. who the best conference in the country is. Aaron Wilson also said, I had a drive-by shooting one block from my house yesterday. Okay. Okay. Way to keep it real. As did we. A couple of, uh, what, a couple of weeks ago, there was a uh, there was a drive-by shooting. Guns are in this country, man. Guns are a big part of the news cycle every single day. And it is scary. It is, I'll be honest with you. It, we were at uh, we were at a mall the other night, which I'm going to get into later. Because holy cow, <clears throat> yeah, we were at the mall the other night, and I was thinking to myself, walking down, saw Rudy Gay and his kids at the mall the other night. The former U- yeah. UConn Husky Rudy right. Gay at the mall with his kids here in Salt Lake City the other night. But I was thinking to myself, who? I, my wife goes to the bathroom. She goes into she goes to the bathroom and I'm just kind of meandering down this hallway. And I'm thinking to myself, I wonder who here has a gun. Because we're pretty much in an open carry state, man. Like yeah. it's not hard to carry a gun here. And I'm just thinking to myself, who here has a gun? It, it, I don't know why it came to my mind. That's how pervasive it is that I'm in big groups and I'm thinking to myself, who here has a gun? Yeah. Hmm. Who has a gun? Uh, where <clears throat> were you the shooter, Aaron Wilson? Uh, no, I don't own a gun. Okay. Tortillas? Yes. Man, we had bomb tacos. This was a Mexican food made at home weekend in, in Casa de Monte Crib, and it was amazing. Um, Terry Snyder. Hello, Terry. I'm a West Coast homer. If a football, basketball, or baseball team isn't from Washington, Oregon, or California, I could care less. So you could care less. It's pot. You, I think you mean, I could not. <laughs> people make this mistake. I'm not even picking on you. People make this mistake all the time. It's, I could not, it, it's not possible that I could care less. I could not care less. Yeah. Uh, I could care less. I would, I won't watch regional telecasts are the best. I think the problem with regional telecasts at the college level is the money is not there. Yeah. The, that's, that's the biggest problem. That's the biggest problem. Uh, RJC, man. ND will assess the money and the Big Ten SEC don't have the stones to exclude. Well, why would you want to exclude Notre the stones? Yeah. Well, why would you want Notre Dame to be excluded from the college football playoff? 
well, let's see, because Notre Dame makes you more money. So you're saying you want to make less money. Notre Dame brings a ton of people to the TV screen. So you want less people to watch. Why would you want Notre Dame excluded? And, and I'm, I'm all here for it. Why would you want Notre Dame excluded? Uh, Cause I, this statement, this statement is the one that, that I think is, is an absolute epidemic in sports. We talk and we say, don't have the stones to exclude Notre Dame. Why would you want to exclude Notre Dame? If they're one of the 14 best teams in the country, wouldn't you want them in the... You would. So if they're not one of the ranked in the top 14, wouldn't you have the stones then to exclude them? The system is set up so that Notre Dame is an independent has to be ranked in the top 14. They don't have, you know, the typical AQ, the auto qualifier, because they don't get an automatic bye week unless, I would assume, they're one of the top four seeds in the in the college football playoff. If they're one of the top four seeds in the college football playoff, what does that mean? That they're a dominant football team. So you don't want a dominant football team in the college football playoff? Apparently not. What do, like, what do... That's the shit that I don't understand. That's like akin to, well, whoever wins the NCAA tournament is the best basketball team in the country. You understand it's who's playing the best basketball. Now, this year, if UConn wins again, I have no doubt they're the best team in the country. I don't know how you beat them. Yeah. I, I think Dan Hurley is, he is the next legend. Yeah, he's got it unlocked. I mean, the guy is just doing a phenomenal job. What a story he is. But if UConn wins, that's like saying, like this statement here, the Stones, that's like stay, saying, well, if UConn wins, the Big East is the best. Term. Well, you know, Monty, NC State's in the ACC's best basketball conference. Or the, the Big 12 versus the ACC. Look at their records this year. That It makes no sense. Yeah. Think through the shit before you say it. Like the Stones. That makes no sense. Uh, fair uh, or... Aaron Wilson, hit the like button, people. Yes, hit the like button. Uh, I'm here, by the way, for a an Amazon gift card today. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we had Friday off, so we didn't get to do the donations <clears throat> and and play the game. So, you know, if you guys, I'm here like for performing it. today. You know, we're at uh, we're at. Uh, let's see, we are at a total of 271 viewers right now, across all platforms, uh, which really is Twitter and YouTube. So, I want to reward you if you're here now. If in the next 60 seconds, the next 60 seconds, and let me get my little timer out. Yeah, get the little timer out, Monty. Let Ma let Uncle Monty get the little timer out, <laughs> okay? If in the next 60 seconds, y'all. Hey, y'all. Why can I not find my timer? Yeah, if it's in a the next clock emoji. There it is. Oh. Okay. Ho, oh, ho, shut up. <laughs> if in the next 60 seconds. If in the next 60 seconds, we get to 65 likes. So that's 25. That's 25. I will give away a $65 Amazon gift card starting right now. Go. There it is right there. Let's go. Hit the like there it button, is. man. This ain't difficult. You, you've got to get 25, 25 new likes. You're off to a slow start. Let's go. L l there's 10 right there. There's 10 likes right there. We're at 49 now. Come on. So hook it up. You've got 40 seconds 15 to get likes. 15 likes. Come on, baby. 15 likes. Steve Stepanek is back. My guy, how are you? Let's go. Hit the like button. Are, are you out of the hospital? Give us a health update. Uh, 53, you guys. We need 12. 12 in, in 25 Come seconds. Come on, man. Body this thing like your DJ. 12 Burns, baby. in 25 seconds. All you got to... I'm not playing your game today. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Seven. You sons of bitches. Seven. Hit the fucking like button. Come on. Seven. 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 Four. Dude. Four. Oh, my God. Three, two, one. This oh, you didn't get empty. it. You did not. Empty. The opposite of full. Bro, you're too like short. How, how do you, how do you come up, dude? Dude, I, this wasn't even a big ask. There's 300 of you now watching or whatever it is. 270. Damn. 
Now it gets to 70. Yeah, whatever, bro. You guys. You guys. Whatever. You, you, you know. We'll try next hour. You know. Uh, Mike Smith, Monty Show, shaming shaming yeah, the, like, come on, the dude, like hyenas. You, you, you guys are more willing. You guys are more willing to DM Monty like, hey, Monty. Hey, Monty. Uh, did you see what the Florence State story was? Then you already hit the like button. Steve Stepanek, I get out of the hospital today. Oh, good. They cut my little toe and some bones in my foot. Oh, no. Bro. Dude, I hope you're okay. I, think I hope you're book. okay, man. Cam Harrison, I hit the like button. Uh, Jimmy Otson, why would USC cancel a long-standing rivalry with Notre Dame? Sounds like Big 12 shame. Wow. You know. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, Aaron Wilson says, hit the like button. Like, like, like. Uh, you know what, Aaron? DM Jake. We'll give you we'll give you a $25 Amazon gift card. How about that? Aaron Wilson, we haven't seen you in some time. You gave away a membership today. I like giving away Amazon gift cards on the show. Everybody uses Amazon. Yeah. DM Jake will give you a $25 Amazon gift card. I really appreciate you, Aaron. Thanks for being here, dude. I've missed you. It is good to see you. I hope you are well. Uh, West Virginia Scott gives us a thumbs up. Monty, you're a Yankee. You have no, no business saying y'all. Hey, y'all. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know. Uh, let's see. RJ Seaman, I thought this through, Monty. Use your frontal lobe, sir. You thought what through? Yeah, what did you think through, bro? I don't know. Chad Carter, let's go, peasants. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. Jeremiah Champion, maybe the majority of the demographic is just too old to understand how to hit a like button. Apparently, dude. I mean... Our our major viewership is, is really 25 to 54, but 18 to 54 is our major viewership. And really... We trail off after after 40 years old. So I don't think so. Ferris Khan, good morning to you. Okay. Don't let me down, Here Ferris. Go, dude. USC can have new rivalries with Ohio State and Michigan. Michigan and Notre Dame don't uh, play every year anymore. Time to move on. Focus, uh, focus, not the big. No, I think sources have told me for the better part of a year that Notre Dame and Michigan will rekindle their rivalry on an annual basis that both universities are committed to trying to figure that out. Um, I think some of the distractions that have happened at Michigan, um, I truly think Michigan thought they were going to keep Jim Harbaugh forever. Sign Steeler guy. I think I, I don't, and I don't know how that happened, but I think they believe that Jim Harbaugh was going to be their guy forever. Yeah, he's the best salesman in the world, dude. Yeah, apparently. Uh, OG Gary. Good morning, my guy, dude. What's up? Uh, Monty is a Yankee, bro. He's a Cub fan. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Why bring it up, Gary? Gary, Why? As, as an NC State fan, are you? Do you like DJ Burns, or what's the situation? Yeah. Where are you bro? at, Gary? As a as a UConn fan, I gotta imagine that <laughs> that you are thrilled. Um, <laughs> what? I, I'm I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm, you know, look, I I, I I I as an Alabama fan, Gary, I just think. <laughs> As a Purdue fan, Zach Eady. I don't give a piss about nothing but the tide, baby. Right? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Oak State James for oh, $5. My. If Florida State is going independent, they're not. They're not going independent. Uh, then I am converting, becoming Jewish, and now I am dating Natalie Portman. Did she go to Baylor, too? James? Bro, did she, did she, you should have worked in a, hey, if they're going to go independent, they got to upgrade their facilities, Paul. You know, you know, I'm just saying. Uh, Gary Wolf, anyone that can't figure out how to hit a like button must be a macaque. See, wow, that's what I'm saying. Bro. That's what I'm saying. Wow. Like, like, macaque. Yeah, uh, macaque. I, you know. Macaque. You monkeys. Uh, Mike Smith, I will be 54 next Monday. Let's go, Mike. Oh, well, Mike, oh my God, how did I not bring this up yet? We were at Harmon's. Mrs. Monty and I were at Harmon's. And what song was playing? Mountain Mama was not playing. Yes, it was. What? West Virginia. Because shit's going good. Take me home. So what did I do? What did I do? I got in the car. And I will even show Jake my iTunes. I can't play it because it's licensed music. Um, is it in my recently? Don't I have a playlist where it's like recently played? Um, I, I actually played it. And Mrs. Monty and I... We're singing along to it. It's not in my playlist. I don't know why. Anyway, there's Green River right there. Where is, where is, where is Mountain Mama? Take me home, um, West Virginia. Um, um. So, Mike, I was thinking about you yesterday. Yeah. I was singing along with John Denver. 
in the grocery store. It was amazing. Uh, RJC man, Yankees are four and I love it. Hate Boone though. Bittersweet. Well, Booney's, you would I don't think Booney. Booney's the issue. I think that they're going to have pitching issues. They're, they're, they're much like the Dodgers though. You have a three runs or less. You had better use your bullpen effectively against the Yankees. Cause you need, you need that a more major league baseball has become the quality start now is five innings. Yeah. That's a quality start. It used to be like, when I covered the Giants, Bruce, Bruce Bochy and I had, we share a huge cranium. Right. You're using your frontal lobe here. He actually, frontal lobe. Yeah. He actually gave me one of his hats because him and I both share. He's, I believe he's eight and a quarter is Bruce Bochy's hat size. It's wild. But it's almost impossible to get a baseball cap that's bigger than eight. Like he actually cuts the, the seams in his hat. Can you measure it? It's amazing. Anyway. But he and I used to talk about this all the time with Tim Lincecum. Six innings, three earned or less. That's a quality start. Anymore, it's five innings and you leave the game with the chance for your team to come back and win. Right. <laughs> quality start. Yeah. Right? So if if you're going up against the Yankees or the Dodgers, dude, you had better have a, a four-inning bullpen. Because that's what Major League Baseball teams are building now is four-inning bullpens. And you better have a closer that can get you four or five outs. Yeah. Because guys like Josh Hader, now you're seeing it. The best closers in baseball, those guys can't just be ninth inning guys anymore. Because offenses are too good. They're too good. Period. It, I mean, it it, it yeah. is what it is. But, hey. Uh, Dakota Tubbs, good morning, my guy. Good to see you. Jim Harbaugh has a, uh, the record for most vacuum cleaner subscriptions sold at the University of Michigan. I've Vacuums heard that. are my thing. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. You know. Uh, the eclipse is on my birthday. I think uh, it's a sign about my life. Wow. Yeah, that you're bright and you're glowing. And when people look at you, their eyes burn out of their head. That's bullshit. That's what it sounds like. Uh, Monty, you can't carry a tune. Be Please don't do that again. I I'll keep that in mind. I'll try to keep your feelings. Actually, Florida State is renovating. The I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Almost made it. Almost made it an entire hour without James telling me that there's a stadium being Dude, renovated somewhere in the country. Money. Uh OG Gary is a Waxahachie State fan. <laughs> I am thrilled that my Boilermakers are going to roll tide on the Huskies. <laughs> <laughs> Go Tar Heels! Exactly right. Exactly right. Jeremiah Champion. My students have state competition this Saturday. Anybody willing to wish them luck? Very small school. Any support is great. What's the what's the yeah, competition? What's the, what's the competition? Tell us about it. Tell us. There was a debate about is chess popular in our members only group. I love chess. Yeah, I'm a huge chess fan. You know, uh, Boss Frog for fifty dollars this morning. Hello, wow. my Porsche brother. What's up, bro? Uh, hey, Monty. Hypothetical: <laughs> Florida State and Clemson exit the ACC. Would the ponies consider renegotiating the $200 million entry fee since the exiting blue chip football programs have devalued the conference? I'll hang up and listen. <laughs> I, th who are, this is an interesting question though. What if Clemson and Florida state win? And I don't think they're trying to win in court just for the record. I think they're trying to negotiate a settlement and they went to court to try and move Bubba Cunningham. In North Carolina. That's my opinion. I've heard different, you know, hypotheses about this. And I think that's why they went to court. But I mean, renegotiating their $200 million entry. I fee, thought you said 200 million. Like, do you understand the money that SMU is not going to Dude, make? That's an insane, insane and, amount. And, and now they're not even getting the pro rata they deserve because the college football playoff committee won't pay it. Yeah, and, and I'm really surprised that they didn't consider that when they made this move. Like, I, everyone just assumed they'd be auto-eligible, and that's not how it works. I am not certain what it will take for change in the ACC. What would it take? I don't – I can't even think – It would it, take a total restructuring of college football in the bigger picture because that – I'm telling you, that grant of rights is – Lock solid, dude. Bolt locks, like double pad locks. Why, why like... would ESPN not pick up their option? Well, if 10 teams left the conference. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Like you're talking about negotiated leverage. Yeah. You've got to find a group of teams in that conference 
And again, I, I have a hard time believing that, that Stanford, Cal, and SMU are going to move to, I don't know. You're going to have to get North Carolina, which I think give the, what's, where are the power centers in the ACC? Well, it's Tobacco Road. Right. I continue to tell you that. People don't believe me, but it's it's North Carolina and Duke and Clemson and Florida State and who else? That's what the question is. Mm-hmm. And everybody, again, comment section, if you go back and look at our comments on our ACC videos, well, Monty, North Carolina and NC State are tied at the hip. They're not. I believe that Virginia is very influential. And I think that Virginia is very valuable as a brand. Mm-hmm. And is. I think Virginia is interesting. I think Louisville is interesting. I, think I don't there's a certain reliability with Virginia and UNC and like some of these schools in the ACC that you don't necessarily have. Like this NC State run is nice and everything, but nobody's going to sit here and be like, yeah, they're an every year, you know, final four threat. Like nobody's saying that. And, and I think that when you look at the schools in the ACC, there's definitely, uh, you know, a, a, a delineation of power, if you will. You have your top cut of schools like UNC and Duke and Clemson. Yeah. And I hate saying this about Clemson because I don't believe that Dabo's even trying to win at this point. But Clemson's <laughs> there uh, and your Florida guy. State's there. And and I think it's those schools that are, and Virginia's there for sure, those schools are controlling the conversation. Now, if you look at it from the standpoint of commitment to leave the conference, yeah, I don't, I don't think that that UNC is committed to leaving the conference. I, I, I think that Clemson's not necessarily even committed to leaving the conference. I think Clemson just thought, Hey, let's see what happens if we do this. Let's see what kind of leverage we could, we could, you know, potentially conjure up through this, you know, and that's why they're doing it. Florida state to me is the only one that is actually like committed, die on the Hill, ready to leave the conference. That's the only one. And that's their problem. You can't leave this conference by being alone. And Somehow, some way, they're going to learn that lesson, and clearly, it's 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 going to be the hard way. And I, again, it's the same logic that said SMU would be a college football playoff eligible team if they joined a Power Five. That same logic says, oh yeah, we'll be able to leave on our own, right? We'll 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 go independent in the in the twenty four twenty five season. It that's not that's just not how this stuff works, man. So yeah, I, I if if two schools leave, I I think nobody has any idea what's going to happen. Because for that to take place, you, in my opinion, would need a complete restructuring of the of a yes, entire system. I would agree with that. I would a hundred percent agree with that. I think that, yeah. Um, oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, did you guys see this story that Florida Atlantic just tweeted out? That Florida Atlantic is going to play a football game on an aircraft carrier. Look at this tweet from Florida Atlantic. What better, where better to host this year's Battle of the Coasts than off the coast of the Atlantic? The game versus uh, South Florida will be played in the Atlantic Ocean aboard an aircraft carrier, a carrier, a first in college football history. That's cool. Wow, that's cool. Thank you, Billy, for sending that to me. That's super cool. I hope nobody falls in the ocean. That's got some ACC vibes on it. That's got some basketball vibes on it, yeah. Yeah. which I think was super cool. All right, hour number two of the Monty Show, as always, presented by our good friends at Prize Picks, PrizePicks.com. Chaboy went one of three over the weekend. Um, <coughs> got shellacked on Friday. Now, I have told you guys repeatedly that I rarely go over. Uh, Wednesday, 0 for 5. Thursday, win. Friday, 0 for 3 in my prize picks, right? Mm -hmm. But then Saturday, I had just had enough of the bullshit. So after the loss on Friday with Bryce Harper, Spencer Strider, and Aaron Judge, um, I went full commit and decided that Zach Eady was my guy. (laughs) I put a hundo on Zach Eady. You put a hundo? A Benji? I put a Benji on Zach Eady. Um, 
and and I he came through and let me let me get the final number so I don't get this wrong because people are on it. Somebody told me the other day that Aaron Judge cashed when he didn't because I you can't count. I can't. <laughs> I'm not the one who's got to count, dude. Prize picks does. And trust me when I say they didn't get it wrong. Hey, by the way, if we're counting, we're gonna win every time. Just pointing that out, bud. So um my guy Zach Eady yesterday, his number was 38 and a half. For he, points? Points, rebounds, and assists. Okay. He did that on points alone. Uh, he put up a 57 yesterday. Cashed on that. And then anybody see uh, old man LeBron last night? Dude. LeBron James last night was 34 and a half. Look at my guy LeBron last night. 40 points, seven rebounds. I'm for real. Five dimes. Two for two. And then I made the ultimate, really the the ultimate mistake that actually did not that actually worked out. It actually worked out with my guy Keontae. Key hey. seventeen and a half points. What did my guy come through with? Eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> On a demon, buddy had eighteen on a demon. So you, okay, so let me get this right. You put a you put a Benji on Edie, Key, and LeBron. A hundred to win two twenty five. Damn. I'm telling you, prize picks the NCAA tournament and today's prize picks with baseball. Now, the, I was looking at the Major League Baseball schedule this morning while I was laying in bed at four o five wide wide awake. The schedule today. Um, is slightly appetizing only because, only because Shota Imagana is pitching for the Cubs. Now, does he have an interpreter or what's the situation? He speaks Shohei. Um, okay. Got it. I love that game. And then the other thing is the New York Yankees, baby, <laughs> are going up against Ryan Nelson, who was 8-8 eight eight with a 5-3-1 last season. Yeah. So there is some prize picking to be had. And the other thing here that you uh, you got to point out is that the San Francisco Gigantes are starting Keaton Wynn. Keaton. Keaton. Uh, they're starting. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they're starting Keaton Wynn against the Doyers the, 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 the yeah. at Dodger Stadium. Okay, here's what I got. Here's what I got for today. Just I don't while you've been talking nobody about. cares. So I got Ballinger for more than seven and a half <laughs> fantasy score. Michael A. Taylor to have one base and Otani to have more than eight and a half hitter fantasy score. I don't like hitter fantasy score in any way, shape, or form. Well, I'm not, but I think you also got to go. Anybody look at good old Katie Clark? Katie Clark. Anybody see my, my girl, Katie hey girl. Clark? Hey, anybody see my girl, Katie Clark? Because I think. This is an interesting one tonight. Women's college basketball. Caitlin Clark, 32 and a half points. You got to go under, don't you? Angel Reese is 18 and a half points versus Iowa tonight. I think you got to go. I think you got to go under on Caitlin Clark. Yeah. I think there's, there's no question. Uh, but Paige Buchers is 26 and yeah, a half. I got to go more on that against USC. I think you got to go more. Yeah, I got to prize picks is amazing. Download the uh, prize picks app. Uh, use the promo code Monty to get a hundred percent deposit matching at prizepicks.com. You put in a hundred, they'll give you a hundred more. You put in $5. They'll give you five more. 10, 10, 20, 20, you name it. You can play for a lifetime on 20 bucks at prizepicks.com. Uh, it is, I have had so much fun with it. I've had as much fun as, mm, I've had as much fun as one is allowed to have on prize picks. Matt Ritson says LSU women's basketball coach ripped the LA media. She's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't even want to did you guys see the floor issue that they had in Portland last night? This is wild. Uh, I, I, and if somebody wants to help me explain this. Last, last this weekend at the Moda Center. How do you get this so wrong? The picture on the left, you can see how short the three point line is. The picture on the right is regulation. 
the picture on the right and the picture on the left are the exact same court. One end of the court, the three-point line was miss, was wrong, laid down incorrectly, was misapplied. And it was half a foot short by some estimations. And they said, we can delay the game for two hours to retape it, or we can play through it. So they decided to play through it. And they shot a higher percentage on the end with the long, with the correct three point line. They only shot 29% on the short one, 33% on the long one. But I just, I bring this up because Mike, here's my question. Would this have ever happened in a men's game? Uh, no, absolutely not. I, I, there's just no way. This is the World Cup being played on crappy fields. Um, this is, it's all of the things that we always see. Well, and, and I almost I almost want to say it's worse than that because, because this is not just, it, like, this is not quality of the field. This is, this is just straight up, it's done wrong. Like, you just straight up. It, like it would be, it would be like a football field being, you know, uh, you know, seventy yards on one end and fifty on the other, right? I mean, that's what you're talking about here. You're talking about uh, a kicker in football having to, you know, from the forty kick a seventy yard field goal. I mean, that's, that's I'm amazed by it. What you're looking at here, and I know that people are going to say, "Oh, well, two holes. It's only half a foot. What's the big deal?" The big deal is you practiced all season and played all season on one three point line. And now in one of the biggest games of your life, you're shooting on another one. That's the big deal. It's not the fact that they can't make the shot or, or that there's any issues shot making. It's the premise of it, man. This would have never happened in a men's game. This didn't happen for, for big boy Burns and NC state. This didn't happen to Edie. This didn't happen to no. UConn. Right. But it did happen to these two. It did happen for several other teams who played on that floor, which is my other point about the whole situation. You had, I, I think it was two other games that were played on that floor in that setup before anybody realized what was happening here or or the, the discrepancy between the two. To which I say, we're not taking these games seriously enough on the women's side. And women's basketball is growing. It's in a great spot. It's continuing to get better. It's continuing to get more popular, continuing to garner more revenue. And I think that's great. Yeah. But the disrespect that this is right here, it's I wild. feel like is not being talked about enough. It is, it is wild to me. It is wild to me. Uh, Rock and Rant, LSU's women coach, basketball coach is a clown. She truly, she is just a detestable person. She drives me crazy. Mike Smith, SMU should not have to pay the fee due to them carrying the Dallas TV market. Well, obviously. I mean, Tarrant County, boy. Yeah. I'm kidding. Dallas and it did mommy. Dallas is in Dallas County, a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, Chrissy, I heard that ESPN is not going to extend the ACC contract to 2036. Why would they? A, the decision will be made for them. You know, they have. You know, they they will do what they need. Uh, what did she do? Rock and ran. I seen a blur, but did not. Okay, so the. The LSU coach had a story written about her that was not flattering. Her, She is very, very Aaron Rodgers. Everybody hates her. Her family hates her. She hates her family. She hates herself. She treats gay and lesbian players differently. Blah, 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 blah. Go, go find it. And then she ripped the LA Times last night because they were not flatter, flatterers of her. It, it's crazy. RJC man, Bubba has zero power to move at UNC. Oh, really? Uh, they have changed rules, needs president and board of trustees to leave the ACC. Dude, you're so <laughs> thick skulled, bro. Like, I, I, I legit don't think oh we can God. help you, dude. Honestly. I'm honestly. not even going to justify that with yeah, a comment. Next comment, dude. Uh, so I am a color guard instructor, flag squad. Yes, I was in the color guard at Rocky Ford High School in Colorado. You guys don't win much in Colorado. This is our first time ever competing, and we are going into state seed fifth out of 10. Nice. My guy, good luck. Good luck. That's awesome. Uh, Gary Wolf, there's something wrong with your medulla oblongata. I know. Oh, okay. Got it. So you called him in fancy terms. You're trying to call him stupid. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I believe that's the case. I get uh, it. Chrissy, the ACC network is worth 
anything it, network is worth anything anymore to ESPN after Clemson and FSU leave, but they they, they can't leave, guy. <laughs> like, how difficult is this to understand? They're well, not going anywhere. Like, they. Can't. I would be shocked if either of them moved singularly by themselves. You're you're going to need to. In order to get out of the grant of rights, my opinion, based on what I've been told, is that they would need a group of 10 universities to get out of the ACC. You need someone else's help. You're not getting that help. And it's a lot of help that you're going to need. I, I don't see any way that you could even do this on your own. I feel like we are celebrating the fact that these two want to leave. We're, we're, we're like, oh, yeah, man, wow. Dude, the ACC sucks, and they're terrible, and... Clemson and Ace and FSU are, are are victims, and you know they had a gun to their head when they signed that contract, not once but twice. No, they didn't. Yeah, they agreed to it when it was convenient for them, and now they don't want to be held accountable to what they agreed to, and they don't want to be held accountable because it's not convenient for them anymore. Yeah, so I, I don't. Is that? I don't know how you how you spin this. I I truly do not. Um, but it is it's remarkable to me that we're in a place where, I, I mean, you just have to, you guys have to understand that Florida State and Clemson, as valuable as they are as brands individually, they have very little pull and sway in the ACC to do anything on their own. Yeah. Which is why I think they're trying to move people. And to the, to the comment about, well, this guy and that. If you think that North Carolina doesn't listen to Bubba Cunningham, and if you think that, look at the Arizona, Arizona State example. They, like, we've been over this ground. Yeah. Uh, sorry about my grammar mistakes, Jeremiah Champion said. Yeah, you're, be better, dude. You're a flag instructor. Yeah. I expect perfect grammar. Uh, running around trying to get ready for the day at the same time I'm trying to type. That's so see, Do you see the level of commitment right here out of, out of Jeremiah? He's literally trying to get his team ready, and he's still got the program on. You know, I agree with that. Uh, you know, it, it, it's fine. Um, it's fine. Sup salty, LOL. Who, oh, it's salty here today. Good to see you. Salty. Is it his actual account or his burner? It's probably a burner. I would have, to, I don't, which I don't know why he's, I don't believe he's blocked. <laughs> I don't believe he's blocked. Uh, the, this Florida state situation is insane. Yes, it is. Yes, absolutely. It is. Um, stop John DeLon. I'm not, I, I, I am not. Oh no, a comment dump. Where did it go? John DeLon's trying to argue, uh, is trying to argue flipping, you know, waffles versus pancakes. Like, what are we doing? What would like what are we what are we doing? You know. Yeah. Um James, in theory, if UNC Clemson, Miami, Notre Money. Dame, and Virginia Tech Money. and five others voted to break away and reform the ACC with just 10 teams, why would they reform the why would they want to reform? Would your whole point is not to start a new conference? Your whole point is to go get paid. Yeah, you're not going to start a new conference, but okay. Uh, each team would get more money. That makes sense. But FSU wants the Big Ten. They wouldn't get more money because who? Where does money come from in in college athletics? TV and the college football playoff. So. I don't know. Uh, Big Blue Horses. When I see FSU going indie, yeah, it's April 1st. It's it's one of the – it's not seriously. even April 1st on our show. Like, this has been going on since last week. So, uh, the wind is going to screw up passing bad. I th Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know. Boston Mapes. Monty got April fooled. How did we get April fooled? Yeah. What are you talking about, dude? You know. I, I don't know how we got April fooled. Exactly. But it's fine. Um, Ferris Khan, did Monty actually think? It's anyway. Listen, listen. The concept of playing a football game on an aircraft carrier is it's, awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. What? Why is this? You guys, this would be amazing. Yeah. If they if they actually did that, how awesome would that be? Yeah. Come on, that would be. That would be amazing. I don't think that you could actually do that. Is that what you guys are talking about? I don't think you're actually doing that. You're not playing on a, on a air. How are you going to play? 
I quite literally said, I hope nobody falls in the ocean. Gee, Bro. You're not actually playing on a... Dude, they're not like cruising through the Atlantic Ocean kicking off. That you're, There's not... no way to play a football game on an aircraft carrier. Yeah, the only reason basketball works on an aircraft carrier because it's so much smaller. The court physically is just so much smaller. You would fall... If you're playing a football game on an aircraft carrier, you would fall off the aircraft carrier. But anyway, okay, that's cool. That's fine. Uh, Rasheed better get a lawyer. Yeah, how well, about the Rasheed Rice situation? Well. The Rasheed, did you guys hear about this? Kansas City Chief, SMU grad, Rasheed Rice. Uh, yeah, he's he's wanted, you know, in connection with, I don't even know how you describe this. Um, here's the video. Um, this is Rasheed Rice's alleged. Yeah. There's a Corvette in a Lamborghini Urus. You see the Corvette stops on the right. They see the blinker lights. That's the Urus, the Lamborghini. Now you'll notice a bunch of dudes hop out of the Lamborghini Urus and they're looking around. Here's the problem. It's not that they got into an accident. The issue is they took off alleged, allegedly. According to the um, police in Dallas, this this Lamborghini is registered to Rasheed Rice. Watch the left side of the screen. There's the Lamborghini. There's the Corvette. They were going at an exceptionally high rate of speed. Both of them lost control. It was a six-car accident that included minor injuries. And they fled the scene. Yeah. And there's no, there's no indication that Rasheed Rice was driving. There's no indication that he was involved, but the Lamborghini Urus is registered to Rasheed Rice. And so he is a he is not being classified as a fugitive. The Dallas police want Rasheed Rice to, to, to come in and talk to them. And he has not done so. It is important to note that Rasheed Rice is also not listed in the county jail records. So he has not been arrested. He has not been charged. But they want to speak with him about this accident. And apparently there, this is one dash cam. And there are apparently multiple videos of this accident. But they're going at a crazy fast amount of speed. And I don't know if any of those three are actually Rasheed Rice getting out of that car. I have no idea. Right. But that is a gnarly, gnarly situation. And here's the question I have. If you're Rasheed Rice, you just had an unbelievable season. Do you not have any common sense in the moment? This is, again, my question. Where's your no guy? And I don't have any problem. I, I'll be honest with you. Guys race around in cars like this all the time. Yeah. Nobody died. There were six injuries that were classified as minor. Uh, uh, one guy apparently they believe has a minor concussion after getting airbagged, which was said to be the most serious injury. You're running away from this scene. You you got into a significant accident and you get in your car and then you drive off. Do you think people don't know who you are? You're from Dallas. You played at SMU. Right. You're you're a local guy in a high profile car. You think people aren't going to know who you are? This was this is bad all the way from the get. Yeah, they're they're gonna know who you are, and I and I think that too many guys don't have the no person. They don't have someone to help them in bad situations that they've probably never been in. You can't tell me this is this is something that he's you know super familiar with. I mean, hell, most of us aren't even uh, you know a lot of us haven't even been in an actual accident, yeah. let alone a high speed you know collision, Oof. if you will. I, I don't know what you do here. So you crash, and then it's at that point, because you don't have someone there who can guide you, you're like, all right, well, what should we do? Oh, man, like, we just were speeding, and, it, you know, like, we should just go. That's what you decided to do, and that's, you know, that could get you in trouble. Yeah, he is going to have to turn himself. I would assume this gets resolved today. Any attorney is going to tell him you got to go talk to the cops. Yeah, well, and I, and I think it's important, too, like, you know, who the hell knows if he was – 
in his car or was he driving if he was in the car like well there's some question about who owns what he 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 leased from what from what they were saying on espn radio he leases the lamborghini and owns the corvette so there's he's you're not getting away from this dude yeah you're not getting away from that you 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 are tied to both vehicles and if you weren't driving either one of them okay why wouldn't you tell the cops that? Because they're going to ask you, well, who was driving? And you're going to say, I don't know. Just playing that out. What if you were driving the Corvette or the Lamborghini? Because if he is the registered owner of the of the Corvette, yeah, and you are the the lesser of the or the lessee of the Urus, yeah. There, there's no getting away from this. Man. Yeah. I mean, you have liability here either way. It's just a matter of, you know, what, what it's going to look like. And that's why I say, like, I, I think people don't understand like the responsibility of having these kind of cars and this type of access to money, because again, it's like, Hey man, like if something bad happens, you're the one that they're going to want to talk to because you are the one who owns the vehicles, not your friends. Yeah. So again, if or she was in the back seat chilling, and they decided to go out and do this, then he needs to say that. But again, it's like, do you really want to, you know, snitch on your friends, I guess, type deal. That's the tough part. Yeah, And again, this is what you've worked your entire football life for. To get here where you've won Super Bowl, you're, you're a huge contributor on that team. You're the, I believe he's the second leading receiver behind Travis Kelsey on that yeah. club. Like, And here we are prancing about on the freeway and that's why i always try to point out like crazy. With, like with guys like lebron let's say he, like he deserves a lot of credit for never really getting in trouble over anything i mean he's been criticized heavily for things but criticism and actually getting in like legal trouble are two totally different situations and that's why i say man like it's all about who's around you rashi is going to learn that lesson the hard way yeah are you guys really still arguing about this football thing my guess is, is this not an April Fool's joke? The, okay, you guys, we pointed this out. Billy, our listener, I think Billy sent it to us. Guy, they're having, it's it's clearly an April Fool's joke. Just, just like, there's some huge debate about this in the well, comments Well, you said it was happening. No, I didn't. I said they're going to fall off the fucking ship. He's going to run a go Jesus. route into Jaws. Guy? What are you, what are you, what are you serious? It's going to run a go route into Jaws. They're not playing a football <laughs> game on an aircraft. Can we just put this to bed? <laughs> They're not playing a football. They, I'm sure they could play a football game on an aircraft carrier. Why would you? If the aircraft carrier was docked, you could probably make it happen. Why would you do that? That doesn't make any, it's, it, stop. You guys, stop. That's wild to me. Uh, Let's see. Finally, Monty uh, agrees with me about something. What's that? What are we agreeing with you on? I don't know. Uh, RJC, man, I'm in Virginia. You go to jail over 100 miles an hour. Oh, it's it's a felony. There's, there yeah. is no question it's a felony. Yeah, ask Georgia. If you are, it, it's, in all seriousness, yeah. it is a, it is a, that is, that is called, it, it, the, there's multiple felonies. When you, when you are, I believe it's 20 miles an hour over the speed limit or more, they can write you a ticket for a felony depending on what what your top speed is that they were able to laser you at over 100 miles an hour i think in just about every state is a felony yeah it's felony uh speeding it's felony reckless driving it's felony uh endangerment like it's not that's not where you want to be that's not where you want to be in any way shape or form and then when you get in an accident that involves six other people including uh airbags and uh, I I believe multiple people went to the hospital for care and were released. And then you left the scene of the accident or somebody left the scene of an accident because there's not a warrant out for him. I would remind you, mm -hmm. he is a person of interest and they would like to talk to him about this accident. Nobody is saying he was the driver. Nobody is saying he was the passenger. Only these two vehicles that are linked to Rishi Rice were involved in this incident. So if he's like a bunch of other dudes in the NFL, you're you have multiple cars and you and your friends and your family 
you drive those cars. Now, I'm guessing he was in one of them. I would guess. Driver, like, well, again, I, I don't know. All jokes aside, this is another NFL player in a Corvette or related to a Corvette well, uh, having a problem. And, and, you know, you had the the Ruggs situation. Now you got this one. Obviously, Jordan and, Addison had his situation. And Henry Ruggs is in prison. Yeah. And somebody died. Yeah. Okay. But you left the scene of an accident. Can't do that, man. You, you, that's not even the... Hmm. Boss Frog, the larger concern isn't the accident or not stopping and rendering aid. I suspect, A, they were in possession of narcotics. I don't know about that. Possession of a firearm under the influence or all of the above. It had to be something. Well, they clearly, I would agree that there was motive for them to leave the yes, scene. I, that's a great way to put you it. Wouldn't, yes. I'm not going to sit here and say they've got Coke in the trunk, dude. I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, they were you know, carrying whatever they were carrying. But whatever it was, they had motive to leave the scene. And also, it could just very well be that they're young, dumb, and scared. I, I mean, let's not put it past them, right? I mean, you just got in an accident <laughs> where you, 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 you know, probably minorly injured six people or whatever it was. And you're like, damn, dude, like, we're in trouble here. We need to go. Like, Let's not put it past them that that was just that simple, that they just simply made that mistake. Yeah, I'm shocked by it. I'm absolutely shocked by it. Stop DMing me about this fucking battleship. <laughs> 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 Apparently, Brett McMurphy got duped on this battleship. Okay. Monty, it's the USS NCAA. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, OG Gary, reckless endangerment. Yes. Boston Mapes, they <laughs> fled. It better be at least a felony. Uh, but I'm kind of with Jake and Boss Frog on this. There was clear reason for them to run. Yeah. Uh, outside of speeding accident. But it wasn't like cars flipped over or there was an explosion. or It wasn't a violent accident. No. You basically sideswiped something. Yeah, you were tagging a bunch of cars and okay. There had to be a reason they ran. I totally agree with that. I totally agree with it. Uh, Kate Nuren says, let's play Battleship. Keith Carl says, there's going to be a football game on a boat. <laughs> exactly. Come on. Uh, boats and hose. That's right. Uh, Steve's to panic. The DUI guy says that you shouldn't do anything that helps the cops. Don't take any tests, but you will be arrested. Here, Here's what I would say. And I've said this on the show a hundred times. I am not a lawyer. I am not giving you legal advice. If you get pulled over and the cops say, hey, uh, do you know how fast you were going? I'm not, I'm not, sir, I'm not discussing my day. Um, am I, am I being detained or am I free to go? Hey, where were you going? Where are you coming from? Where are you headed? I'm not discussing my day, sir. Am I being detained or am I free to go? Can I search your vehicle? Absolutely fucking lutely not. Step out of the car. If he asks you to step out, you got to step out. If he asks you to produce driver's license, proof of insurance, you produce it. But I am not, I am not letting you search my car. I am not, and I, my advice to you is seek, a, seek the advice of an attorney. But if, if somebody, if a police officer asks you to perform a field sobriety test, there is no legal uh, precedent that says you must perform a field sobriety test. Right. Blood draw at the hospital, you should do that. Yes, you should. But there is no place, and we've gotten a ticket, and I have done this exact same thing. I think you will attest yeah, to it. I, yep. The cop came up to the window and said, hey, do you know how fast you're going? I said, I'm not talking about my day. He said, where are you guys headed? I said, I'm not talking about my day. Here's my driver's license and my proof of insurance. And he took it, and he said, okay, I'll be right back. Came back, wrote me a ticket, and we went about our way. Oh, it's just business. But and you're, you're, and, and, I, and I, I even said to the guy, I'm not telling you to be rude. With all due respect, sir. I am not talking about my day. I am not answering any questions. Here's my license and registration. Or yeah, and, and I think that's insurance. that's the important thing that no one talks about. Like you see all these TikTok accounts where these guys go back and forth with the cops. The reason they're going back and forth with the cops the way they are is because they're being assholes about it. Yes. If you are respectful and you just say, hey, you know, as you just said, hey, you know, with all due respect or, uh, you know, hey, sir, you know, respectfully, I, I'm not answering any questions. Here's my, you know, my information. Do what, do what you have to do. And I would also tell you, start recording on your iPhone, on your, your phone, on your communication device. Hit record when they before they walk up to the car. Have a record of it. Uh, Ferris Khan advice when you are pulled over absolutely depends on your skin tone. 
We've talked about this on the show as well. Yeah. If you are dark skin, brown skin in this country, put your hands on the steering wheel. Hate saying it, but it's true. If you are if you are a black man with children who are of the age to drive, educate them. Teach them how to be properly pulled over because it's going to happen. Put your hands on the wheel and do not consent to searches and do not talk to the police. Be respectful. With all due respect, sir, it's not that difficult of a line. With all due respect, sir, I'm not talking about my day. Am I being detained or am I free to go? When he says you're being detained, okay, here's my driver's license and proof of insurance. Where were you going? Sir, again, with all due respect, I am not answering questions. Great. Can I search your vehicle? You cannot. They need probable cause. They need proof of a crime to search your vehicle. That's that's as simple as I can put it. But there is no doubt. And we don't like talking about this in this country, and I don't know why. If you are black or brown in this country, put your hands on the steering wheel. If you have children, please educate them yeah. to put their hands on the steering wheel. I have white privilege. I freely admit that. As a white guy, no cop is while I'm sitting in my car because I think I intimidate people when I stand up. But as a white guy, I, I have no cop is like, well, I wonder if this guy has weed or guns. No, no cop is thinking of that. And I am almost never in my car by myself. If me and Mrs. Monty get pulled over, no cop is going to have fear when he walks up to my vehicle. No, he's not. He's not. I'm going to record it and I'm not going to answer any questions. Being a cop is an incredibly difficult job and they deserve our respect. And that's why you will do it respectfully. Yeah. Period. Jeremiah Champion. Most people just don't know how to actually deal with the police. They think they know, but they don't. You don't know. And you don't know what the cops are doing. You don't. And unfortunately, in this country, you cannot trust the police. We've seen it too often, though. You can't trust the police. Reasonable cooperation goes a long way with the cops. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Obey Chris Rock's rule of getting pulled over. What is that? <clears throat> I don't know that. Uh, Capazzo, who is in the law enforcement community. The last time I got pulled over, I asked the trooper how fast was too fast. <laughs> That's an interesting question. If you're Rishi Rice, here's my advice to you. Turn yourself in. Yeah. Get your lawyer and have him take you to the Think Dallas about Police Department. If you're Rishi Rice, you need to be very aware of where you're at in the NFL calendar. If you turn yourself in, get this taken care of. Nobody's got to talk to you about it at camp. You've got plenty of time, dude. Yep. And you can go about your business. I would highly advise Rishi Rice to get with his attorney, which he already has. I could almost guarantee it. And either go talk to the cops or, hey, if you're trying to avoid a situation, ha meet with the detectives at your home or in or, or at your attorney's office. But you put yourself in this position either by driving that way or allowing people who are in your inner circle to drive your vehicles. Well, and, and that's what I was going to say. If, if you weren't even in the car and these are just two vehicles registered to you that your boys decided to go out and take, you should absolutely go and talk to the cops and get it taken care of. There's just no reason not not to. You know, I mean, at that point, are you even on the hook for endangerment because they're licensed to you or registered to you? Like you weren't even in the car at that point. Yeah, I don't know, man. John DeLon, hands on the wheel, thumbs up so the cops know you're not holding anything in your hand. Cool. Most uh, Leos are pretty decent. I don't know what a Leo is, but there are assholes Law enforcement in every officers. Oh, OK, there you go. There are. I would agree. Uh, hey, player, if I get pulled over for riding dirty, uh, my riding first words. Dirty. My first words would be, have you heard of Victor? Victor's the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Capazzo, they have about 10 to 15 minutes for a traffic stop. After that, they need some type of reason to keep you longer. And you should absolutely be recording that because time matters. The thing that people don't understand is, well, Bonnie, if they, it, it, it's a legal search. Okay, let your lawyer fight for that in court. Handle that in front of a judge. Handle the illegal traffic stop in front of a judge. Handle the blood draw in front of a judge. But the idea that you're going to tell cops you were speeding or try and cry your way out of a ticket, stop. Stop. Yeah, I, I just, we're not in, the, we're in this country anymore. We're not free to just do whatever we want to do. And there's no such thing as a sovereign citizen. There's no such thing as... I'm allowed to, like these guys that do these videos where they're like, I'm allowed to travel freely. Okay, cool. You are, but not while you're operating a motor vehicle without a license or insurance. You're not. I, it, it's wild to me. Yeah. 
you know. Uh, Lopes fan Gabe, white, black, or brown, putting and keeping hands on the steering wheel keeps police at ease. I've had an officer thank me for doing so, and I think you absolutely should. There's no doubt that you absolutely should. Steve Stepanek, I used to get pulled over every weekend but never got a ticket. Nice. I like it. Uh, Giggity, Rasheed should have been driving like that in the national park. Well, Damn, you know, there, there is, there is Jake who drives like this in, <laughs> in national parks. <laughs> yeah. You know, Hey man, you know, Jake, that's you. No cop, no stop, bro. You know what I'm saying, man? I wouldn't RJC man going on a vacation in September, got pulled over by local cops on I-95 known speed trap, six miles from North Carolina line, I was going 96 in a 70, passing a truck, kicking up rocks in the left lane, $750 fine, 550 hour, okay. Community service. Community service. That's a lot. Maybe of you should service. use your frontal lobe the next time you're driving your car. I would. And, and the, most times, here's the truth. I think I've gotten pulled over doing excessive, excessive speed. If you're respectful to the police, they will they will knock that down. They will take they will write you a lesser ticket. Uh, hand over your LTC with your license. Uh, transparency on some things is a good thing. Yeah, if you are a concealed carry person, my friends, tell them that you're carrying. There's no re they that there. It, I believe it's part of your your concealed carry permit. That you have to tell them you're carrying. Mike Smith, uh, I said, I know it's odd for a man of color driving in a rich white neighborhood, but we are in the army and visiting ex-army friends that live here. His jaw dropped. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tanner Plummer. Good morning, Tanner. LOL, that video never gets old. It never gets old. Nope. You know. Uh, Capazzo, I've gone faster than Jake through the national parks. Man, Wow. Mike Smith, we need to see video of Jake driving immediately followed by the raccoon video. Oh. I mean, I, I don't I don't disagree. Oh, you know, God. anytime Aaron Rodgers Me can be rolling on the show. down the window and I get pulled over. How can I help you, officer? <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Uh, Dakota Tubbs, come to Missouri. No concealed carry permit required here. Truth. Um Jakey, LOL, no cop, no stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's only a ticket you get you know, man. Okay, uh, can, can we? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, let's see, one more. Uh, shout it! Oh, look who decided to get their ass out of bed today. Uh, let's see. Yes, you do and should tell them your uh, concealed carry and where it is. Put the officer at ease. You should. You should. Okay, let's bitch and moan about customer service. Now. <laughs> should we expect good customer service? Yeah, it was a rough weekend for me, or it wasn't. It was actually a great weekend with a rough stretch <laughs> on Saturday. So Saturday morning, I go out to my car to go to the driving range, and I have I turn on my car and immediately, bing, bing. Well, what do you want, an aircraft carrier? Yeah, uh, your your front left tire is low, right? Twelve psi below every other tire. Shit. Go over to Maverick, fill it up. We notice there's a staple in the tire. Okay. Fine. It's going flat uh, on the way home from the driving range. The tire had lost five PSI again. Okay. No problem. Um, I go over to where I bought the tires for this particular vehicle. Right. Discount tires. Yeah. Probably my first mistake. Roll up. I tell the guy, Hey, I got a staple in my tire. I got a, I got a nail in my tire is what I told him. Can you fix it? Sure. No problem. We walk around the car. I tell him it's this tire. Okay, great, great, great. All right. Um, do I, you know? Hey, I have that tire coverage because I do. I buy tire coverage on all my tires. Any problem? Pull it off. Put it on the same tire. Done. No cost. Yeah, that's what it, that's what they told you. Uh, that's not how it works. Rolled in and they take all of the tires off my car. So I went up to the counter and I was like, "Hey, just curious. I see all the tires are off my car. Is there something?" Oh, I don't know. Let me go out there. And what have they done? They took all my tires off the off the wheels. They got confused. Oh. They, were putting, they were putting new tires on my car. So he's like, okay. So what did they what do you think they did? They put the tires back on the car. They don't remember which was where. Because they had just taken them all off and 
okay, so um, now we got to put the tires back on the car and we're going to, and I said, well, can't you just air pressure the tires, the lowest one? And the guy just looks at me and he's like, we're handling it, sir. And I was like, okay, come back in. And the guy's like, well, I don't see an, and like, I'm the only one in the store sitting in this lobby. Yeah. The technician comes back in. I don't see anything wrong with the, with the tire. I think we, he literally, I think we just sent him on his way. And the guy's like, okay, well, there's nothing wrong with the tire. Uh, we don't find any nails or anything. And I, I said to him, I saw it. Yeah. He's like, yeah, we couldn't find anything. They're all up to pressure. So you know what happens? They pull the car. I turn the car on. What do you think happened? Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have to go back into the store. Now the tire is not on the front. It's on the back. So they flip the tires around. They're like, yeah, we found it. Thank you for pointing that out. They take a the tire off the wheel. There's not one. There's two nails in my tire. And they're like, well, it's on the shoulder, so it can't be repaired. So that'll be $379. And we can't do the tire until late Monday, maybe Tuesday, because we don't have that tire in stock. I'm like, well, I have tire, I have tire, a tire warranty. And he's like, yeah, I don't see that in the system. So I give him the receipt that on the receipt says I have a tire warranty. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to do you a solid. And that's why oh, I lost my here shit. here we go. That's why I lost my shit. And I said to the guy, you're not doing me a favor. I paid for it. You've already screwed this up. And I, I straight said to the guy, you've screwed this up 10 ways to Sunday. You took off tires that have to be rotated in a specific way and put them in a, a jumbo puzzle. And now you're telling me, and I told him, and he's like, okay, we can do it for $120. I'll give you the coverage. I said, you're not giving me the coverage. I paid for it. And the guy, he just, so now I got to take my car back there and with a deflating tire Yeah. that he's like, well, you know, I would put your spare on if you want, but you can't drive this more than 10, 10 miles. Okay, great. At golf, I knock over my phone on a tripod, hits the ground. Okay, it's fine. I'm at the tire store. It's fine. I get home, drop my phone again, shatter the screen. So I'm like, okay. I get on Apple support, go to Best Buy over here in town. Yeah. They'll fix it for you. Okay. Make the appointment 540 in the afternoon. Go to Best Buy. Do you think they fixed it? No. They don't have the glass. And the guy's like, yeah, and it's going to be another hour to turn off your Find My. And then we'll fix it on probably Wednesday or Thursday, depending on when we get the glass. You're so fucked. So you're really supposed pissed. to be out the phone. I was really pissed. So I get back on the phone and I'm texting with Apple Care, and the lady in Apple Care is like, "Yeah, we have a wide open schedule right over here at the Apple Store. Why don't we just send you there?" Fixed it in an hour. Did Jake? Should we have an expectation of good service? Yeah, I mean, I I think that that you're so in both cases. My issue with this is in both cases, you 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 paid for coverage in a sense. And they won't give it to you. And what I don't understand about tire shops most of the time is, hey, man, like I paid for something like I, I should be getting that back. And again, not just because he advertises on the show, but this is why I'm a big proponent of Ryan at Big O Tires and American Ford. You have someone who is a small business owner who cares about the people he's helping. This this would never take place ever with Ryan at Big O Tires, because he knows, hey, if I take care of this person, they're a customer for life. They're going to come back to me. They're going to keep buying tires from me. They're going to let me do the maintenance. Like, it's all good, right? So I, I, as soon as I heard this issue, I was like, bro, like, why would you not just honor honor the 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 warranty? And then with Apple, I can't believe that you pay for Apple Care or that you did. And they and it's not cheap. the Best Buy, bro. Like, and it's not cheap. Yeah, like it's what did you say? It's three hundred thirty dollars. Three hundred. It's so Apple Care is two ninety nine ninety nine. Yeah, for two years. Yeah. If I don't have Apple Care, it's minimum. I think at the Apple Store they said three hundred seventy nine dollars to replace a glass. And I used Yelp to find like a screen repair place. Yeah. After I dropped my phone, and, and I dropped it on like a mat rug thing a doormat by my kitchen door and it hit like right on the corner, but I think I probably cracked it. Okay, great. 
it was splintered, right. like it was done. Uh huh. So the guy on Yelp was 549. Right. 549. So I just I said to the Apple person, and she handled it well. This Apple person, I'll read you the in your chat. You were chatting with them. Yeah, you can chat with Apple like on your phone. It's it's the greatest thing. Um, I said, let's see, what did I say? Um, I said, uh, very disappointed in my Apple care was the text that I sent. Let me connect you to somebody. Okay, great. Hi, Tim. Thank you for chatting into Apple support. So sorry to hear your about your phone screen. What do you think the first thing I said was? Don't say sorry. Help me fix it. <laughs> Please stop apologizing and do something about it. <laughs> I pay for Apple Care, and now you sent me to Best Buy who can't fix my phone till later in the week. What exactly am I paying for? Got it. Happy to look into uh, the available options. I'm going to send a code to your phone. We go through the shit. Okay, great. Um, and, and at this point, you're you were doing all this on a shattered screen. On a shattered screen, which is just annoying in in itself. Like, so how bad was the screen? Like, was it like the whole screen, or like just the? No, corner? it was like, like right right in the middle. There was a there was a a mark. Yeah, and then there was a big line that ran from the bottom corner all the way to the top, and they were like it was just shattered. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it says uh, they offered to express me a new phone next day. For $99. Um, Non-return fee on that would be $1,754.11 for a new phone. Just, just a little bit of money. I mean, you know, it's not um, a big deal. And she, she said, and I said, can I get an Apple store appointment tonight or tomorrow? This was Saturday. Let me check. Are you familiar with the location that's down the street? <laughs> yes. Um, And then she sends me all of these times right here. Good Lord. A lo like a laundry list. Yeah, what is that, 20 times? It's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22 times that were available. And I said 620 would be great. Well, and she said just that quickly, 620 is gone. How about 640? And from there, it was straight downhill easy. We walked into the store. They took care of us. The guy did it in 45 minutes, 29 bucks, done. Yeah. That's the deal you make with Apple Care, twenty nine dollars. Great, but why did you send me to Best Buy? Yeah, that's what I don't understand, and I feel like this happens in customer service on a regular basis, where where you pay for something, you have a certain expectation, and then you go in to try to redeem, if you will, or execute on that expectation, and the first person you get is terrible. They're garbage. It's like it's like, oh man, this, that, and the other, and we can't do this, and yada yada yada. And then you get to another person, and you get the experience you were expecting. And the amazing thing is, at Best Buy, the guy offered to leave. He's like, "You can leave your phone here." I'm like, "I'm not leaving." <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do for a phone? So then I go to Apple, and the guy's like, "Ooh." He, he looked at his watch, and he's like, "Well, it's late in the day," because at this point now, it's about seven thirty seven something and he's like let me check if we can do it you might have to leave your phone here overnight and i'm thinking to myself who has the ability not to have their phone nobody <laughs> like who's got that ability hey man can you give me a loaner no they don't <laughs> do loaners they don't do loaners that's the amazing thing and then he's like yeah we can have it done here done here in about 40 minutes Come back at 7.55. Went and bought a new pair of Oakley golf glasses. Amazing. Um, my wife got the hookup at, at Athleta on this cool little bag she wanted. Like, we did some shopping. It was awesome. Came back 10 how, minutes early. The phone was done. How weird was it not to have your phone for that time? Not at all. I, You know what? The funny thing is, you don't know what a, what a habit guy I am. I'm used to Apple paying everything. So I had the empty phone case in my pocket. Because they take the phone out yeah. of the case, obviously. And I kept reaching in my pocket, like to. It, it was weird, but I never thought about couldn't make a call, could not. Yeah. I'm trying to use my phone less. I'm trying to be much more present. Yeah, but you know, Dakota Tubbs. I bet all of Monty's troubles are caused by J2H and his wipe from back to front. Yeah, that's Dude, the problem. It's with not it. my fault that that. Where do you think you picked up those staples in the tire? Like, any ideas? I didn't have any trouble until I went and got my hair cut. 
Yeah. So I'm thinking some, there's construction everywhere. Um, I think there's construction everywhere. Um, let's see. I have always had good luck at discount tires. Multiple nails fix nothing. Didn't have any warranty or anything. I'm telling you, I'll never shop at discount tire again. Yeah. I And obviously now knowing Ryan at Big O Tires, like I. Because you, you bought these tires like. A year and a half ago or something like that? Something like, like that, Like a yeah. while back. And I only have 9,000 miles on them. Yeah. And yeah, it's been, a, it's been a while. But the issue is, every time I've gone to Big O Tires, and specifically Ryan, like I don't ever have to worry about my car. I just leave it there. When I come back and pick it up, I don't even, I don't even think twice about it. Yeah. You go into Big O uh, Tires, you don't have to worry about it. You go to Discount Tires, man, and they don't want to take care of you. And then they take all the wheels off your car. And it's like, what are we doing? Yeah. And then when you point that out, they get all pissy about it. Like if he'd have taken all the tires off of my wheels, I'd have been super annoyed with that. I mean, I've literally a 65,000 mile tire that I've only put 9,000 miles on. Why would, did it not occur to anybody why I'd be buying new tires? Like, I, I went here for a nail repair and you took all the wheels off my car and then said there was no, no nail until I pointed it out. And then, and then you were like, no, there's not one, but there's two. It's terrible customer service. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Well, and you know, the other problem is, is, is that, you know, that, that particular store is a little more conveniently located and you obviously I'm sure didn't want to be driving any, I'm not trying to, to drive. I, I my nearest, Ryan is like 30 miles from my front door. Not a possibility with a leaking tire. The nearest Big O tires is probably five miles away. This one's one point something miles away. Yeah. With a tire that's going flat. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not. It's not. And, you know, again, I want to keep pointing this out, too, about Ryan. That's why he expanded his inventory in store, because he knows these situations come up. Yep. Let's be honest. Best Buy is going down the drain. I'll never go to a Best Buy again. My wife got all pissy with me about it too. She was like, dude, it's not that bad. <laughs> I was really pissed, bro. I was mad. When we went in there, I expected they were going to fix my phone. And I would, because that's what the service promised. Yeah. And then he's like, yeah, we don't have the glass. They have to overnight. He's telling me they're going to overnight it. And it'll get here Tuesday or Wednesday. <laughs> But and wait, that I the, thought you were overnighting it. And that the phone would be ready Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> and it's like, what am I supposed to do here? It, it, it's, it's wild It's ridiculous, to me. dude. It's absolutely ridiculous. Best and Buy has gone so far down the hill. I can't even... I don't even... Yeah. Um, discount Tire has always treated me well. I think most of it at fast food places is the younger worker... I. I don't know what fast food has to do with it, but my point is when I'm paying you thousands of dollars, yeah, which I do at Apple and which I do for guys like Ryan at Big O Tires, the tire I have, you guys, is three something, almost $400 a tire. Does that not resonate with you? And I bought the warranty that you said I didn't buy and I had to show you a receipt and then you still didn't want to honor it. That's it. Mm. Uh, I bet all Amani's troubles are caused by Jake. Yep, I agree. I feel like tire service is shop by shop. Got bad service at one, went to another a few miles away and got great service. I don't even disagree. Yeah, with well, that's what I'm saying, like with the iPhone situation, right? I mean, you just have to get to the right person. And, and what's frustrating in situations like the tire thing is you don't have the luxury of just like, hey, let's go around 50 shops and find the best one. Like that's not the position you're in because Correct. your tire's leaking. Correct. Uh, RJC, man, they give you a replacement phone while your phone is getting fixed. They don't. Yeah, they don't actually. They don't. Uh, Aaron Wilson, that phone was toast. The glass was thankfully Apple ran a diagnostic on it and pronounced my battery a hundred percent. My phone in perfect working order afterwards. Apple Colt garbage, old tech for three times the cost. I love my iPhone, but I I'll also tell you at Best Buy, I when we were leaving Best Buy, I actually said to my wife, I'll never buy another Apple product. If they don't make this right, I will never buy another Apple product. Uh -huh. Because I'm paying you for your highest level of service and getting none. 
I can't believe they sent me to a Best Buy. I cannot believe that. Uh, Apple probably has a deal with Best Buy for service calls that can uh, parlay into sales. But I would assume have, they why do. Why have Apple stores then? What what is why 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 have Apple stores? Why why that doesn't make any sense to me. Like yeah, I don't know. Like the 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 thing that I feel like has gone downhill is going into the Apple store. They don't want you to go into the store anymore. Because they're always does. busy. I agree with that. Um, RJC man, Apple does have a loan. Oh my God. Okay. If they have a loaner, why didn't they offer me that? Oh, because here's what they offered and here's what they do. They don't do loaners. They will send you a new phone. And then when you get the new phone, you have to send your old phone back. And if you don't send your old phone back, they're going to charge you $1,754. They don't do loaners. And I, you're stubborn as hell, dude. I, do you think this is like my first rodeo with Apple? Like when you buy a new iPhone, they do the exact same thing. Like it's called their express replacement service. They don't do loaners. They do express replacement because it's super easy for them to fix their product. It took them 40 minutes to replace the entire screen. And then, you know, the best part of the Apple experience, my wife is like, what is the, what's the best case to prevent this? And the guy's like, don't buy any of our cases. No case will, will protect your phone. He's like, if you drop it, it's going to break. Put it and he quite literally was like, Go to Zag and get their, their glass protector. That's how you stop your phone from breaking. That's what the guy said. No, and, and he talked about there was like one otter box that you can get that should mitigate it. But honestly, I don't drop my phone. My wife got me a new case that's like a slippery plastic. That that was my biggest issue, is that there was slippery plastic, and that's why I was dropping it. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's fine. Uh, oh, wow. Jazz general manager Justin Zanuck will undergo a kidney transplant. Wow. Adrian Wojnarowski. Um, his three kids facing a litany of health issues will need transplants too. Through it all, Zanuck remains Utah's front office leader. Wow. Oh, that's terrible news. Terrible, terrible news. Man, we take our health for granted, man. Boy. Mrs. Monty and I were driving up to Wyoming to get lottery tickets talking about that exact thing. That's crazy. She's doing a, a, a week from now, my wife will be in Hawaii doing a triathlon, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Her and her sisters are doing like a tag team thing. Uh, I always keep an old phone just for this reason. Got to have a backup. I'm seriously thinking about it. Yeah. Seriously thinking about it. You know. Uh, let's see. OG Gary says, uh, same for me, RJC, but it was an overnight service. There you go. Um, Jeremiah champion. I have been with Apple for years and I have never been offered a loaner. It, they offer you anyway. It's cool. Uh, Mrs. Monty in the chat. Not everyone has an Apple store near them. I would agree with that. And if you don't, then send me to Best Buy. But Mrs. Monty, we have, I think we have three of them yeah. in the Valley. Yeah. It just didn't compute to me that you sent me to Best Buy down the street from the Apple store. It didn't like, it just yeah. didn't resonate. I don't understand why you did that. I, I truly don't know. Fat Jesus, what good is a loner without all of your contacts? I don't know a single number. Me either. Don't know a single number. Nope. Not one. Uh, Otterbox, Enriquez says. I always keep an old phone, yes. Um... Let's see. Monty just thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. Dude, then what are you doing here? Then what are you doing here? Yeah. I, I don't understand it. It's like once a week with you, bro. You just want to come in here and fight. Yeah. Like, like I, it, I don't it's, understand. It's not that. And you said something that got you filtered today, by the way. I don't know what you said, but it, it that's amazing to me. Um, the, the Apple is very simple. Apple is very, very simple. If your phone... If your phone breaks, they're going to give you two options. You can take it to an Apple store and they'll fix it. And if not, they'll overnight you a phone. I just, I like quite literally had this conversation. So 
you know, Monty definitely is a guy in is a guy in a room. Yes, I am. It's true. My Android has been through hell, hasn't cracked yet. Well, there you true. go, man. I have never bro- knock on wood. I've never broken an iPhone screen before Saturday. Yeah, your iPhone took a beating on Saturday, no doubt. But I've never broken one before. I just generally don't drop it. I don't know why. I put my old case back on and hope I don't drop it. <laughs> they hope I hope I don't drop it. Monty, Apple does a loaner, but the service has to be overnight uh, to multiple day service. Okay. What are you getting fixed in multiple days? Can I ask you that? Just out of curiosity. So one, if they're offering you a loaner, my guess is you don't have Apple Care. Number one. Number two, if you're leaving your phone with Apple for multiple days, it's it, it, there are only a handful of items that could be. It wouldn't be a screen. And frankly, the guy when we were at the Apple store was talking about keeping my phone overnight and did not offer a loaner. And I will, let me, while we're sitting here, while we're sitting here, I'm happy to text Apple while we're sitting here with Apple. (laughs) Do you offer loaner phones during repairs? Just sent that. Just sent that text to Apple. Um, let me connect you with someone who can help. We'll send you a message when we're ready. Okay. So let's see how long it takes them. Let's see how long it takes them. Okay. Um, James, uh, Mrs. Monty, chiming in with a word of wisdom, and it may be I, I don't disagree with that. Best Buy would be great if there were no Apple stores around. I, I totally disagree with that. I use Pixel phones and just buy a new one around uh, 500 if it breaks. No need for insurance with those. That's true. Uh, Kaner and I go to Zags and the screen is great. Cool. My daughter is the only person I know that has broke an otter box. What do you have to do to break an otter box? Okay, here we go. Hi, Tim. I hope you're having an excellent day. Hey, I my. see you're chatting in for loaner phones. If loaner phones are off offered during repairs, is that correct? Yes. 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 Thank you. Let's see what they say. Uh, Had to do diagnostics. They backed up, offered a loaner, and finally gave me a replacement. Um, We no longer offer offer loaner phones. But Monty, they offer loaners. I know. I'm just a fucking asshole who knows everything. Yeah, you're an idiot. Um, We only offer express replacement. Or you may, okay, I've never seen a typo, and now they edited it. Uh, You may may be better off going into an Apple store and scheduling a a repair. Would you like to do so now? No. There you go. And I'm going to screenshot this one part, just so you guys can see. They don't fucking offer loaner phones. Mine's lying, man. He's lying. Right here. How about this? Right hey, here. Hey, Let me you... send this to my computer because you... I'm just the asshole hey, in the room. Does Apple offer loaner phones, dude? Do you um, know? I, I mean, according according to certain people, and you know, I, you know, little old Monty over here doesn't know shit about Shinola. Yeah. Right. Because you know, I I've you're, never you're had gone. an iPhone. Yeah, you just don't. Know and anything. I'm just trying to be that guy in the room, you know, who fucking knows everything. Right. Yeah. Guy, you, you get so fucking asshole. Like we do not offer loaner uh... phones during repairs. You fucking prick. Uh... <laughs> So take your Michigan loving ass and we'll see you tomorrow. Like I, that's what we'll I don't understand. Tomorrow, dude. That's what I don't understand. Like I show you, I tell you point blank. Hey, I just went through this. I just went through that. And now it's look it up on Google. Just oh, Googled it, Monty. Now it's Google. Had to do diagnostics. They backed up and offered a loaner phone. Um, my, uh, let's see, that's giggity. Where's our, Monty thinks he knows that he's the smartest guy in the room. Well, it must well, just then be. there's Apple who says we do not offer loaner phones during oh. repairs. Huh? Man, really shocked by this development, man. Thank you. Stay hard. That is all. Stay hard. No, I do not need to schedule service at, at, at uh, and again, what did she just say? 
Um, I see your zip code is 84009. You have multiple authorized Apple retailers, including <laughs> Best Buy in your area. No, thank you. Uh, anyway, I said thank you. That is all. You're welcome. Thank you for contacting Apple Support. Have a great yeah, day. Yeah, have a nice day. Jag yeah. off. But we offer loaners everywhere. Just loan your phone to everybody. Yeah, just loan, just loan your yeah. phone to everybody. Yeah. Well, I like when's the last time I talked about something off the top of my head without no like am I gonna say they don't offer loaners if I don't know what I'm talking about? I'm giving you a fucking answer. <laughs> it's crazy to me. Oh, okay, let's see the rebuttal now. It is crazy to me. This should be good. He won't have a rebuttal. He will not have a rebuttal. They never have a rebuttal. <laughs> Looks like Monty is the smartest guy in wow, the world. Wow. Like, do you guys I've done this for more than 30 years. I am never going to speak about something as a fact that I'm not that I don't know for a fact. I'm never going to do that. There are no electronic stores left except Best Buy. Without competition, they're allowed to suck. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> Truth. Loaner phones uh, cost Apple money. Express replacement costs us money. Ding. Hmm. Rocket science. Ding. Uh, it p really pisses me off when people put down the God-given good name of Monty. Yeah, Thank dude. You. I, I just, you know. And now notice we're not, we're not. Yeah, where's RJC man now, dude? Where's, where's buddy the loaner phone? Drop my phone last week and crack the screen. Haven't had time to fix it. So pissed. It's terrible. Yeah. It is. I can't do broken screens. I'm glad I don't have one. Yeah. Uh, Apple offered me a loaner phone when I took my sins. I'm in for repair. So take that money. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And there's RJC man. Big 12 still sucks. Oh. Oh, thank you for admitting you're an absolute jackass when it comes to loaner I phones. I just, guys, and and I, I know we talk about this all the time, God. but before we get out of here, there's no reason, there's no reason to be red-ass guy. I've never understood that. Like, there, there's just, like, Michigan you're fan. You're so committed to being an <laughs> asshole in the chat that that's your, that's your way of saying, yeah, Monty was right. Nice Michigan job. fan. Oh, Jim's never leaving. How many mission? Go look at the the. This is like connected, dialed guy. Told us, hey, Jim Harbaugh is going to the Chargers. Jim Harbaugh is going to the Chargers. Well, what do you know? Uh, six weeks later, uh, dudes wearing powder blue. Ute fan. Oh, they're now we're never leaving. You're a liar. I'm telling you, I don't say things that I don't know what I'm talking about. FSU is not going independent this year unless they win in court, which has not happened yet. Or they get nine more people, which means they go to the Big Ten or the SEC. I don't talk about things I don't know about. You guys make me crazy with that. Make sure you donate to the Advocates, a great cause for the month of April. Fighting hunger in the, the, the child population in our country, you guys. It's a big deal. And I know that a lot of people, we we have it easy. We're all the 1%, man. We know what we're having for breakfast. We know what we're having for dinner. We know that we will have dinner. How many kids in this country are going to go home tonight and not have dinner or lunch? How many kids are not going to have lunch? How many kids are not going to the lunchroom because they don't have lunch money? Let's make that go away. Donate to the advocates. Advocates donations on Venmo. Advocates donations on Venmo. Just say children's hunger, Monty children's hunger, whatever. I would love it if you'd shout us out. If not, just say children's hunger. Advocates, donations on Venmo. Help kids have a meal today. Your donation goes immediately to the Murray Children's Pantry. It's a great, great cause. And of course, the advocates are pushing. Theadvocates.com. Until tomorrow, say goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Jake.